Ring of Resolution. What are we really fighting about? Well, people in loving relationships can find ways of fighting about the least consequential things. There are fights about how the dishes should be put away, who's the better driver, how much you're spending. <laughs> you know, it's common knowledge the source of conflict in loving relationships is rarely the surface issue. But what are we really fighting about underneath? After spending the last couple decades studying thousands of relationships, we discovered that at the deepest level, that there are actually a finite number of fights that we're all having. Now, even though we're all very complex and unique as individuals, the underlying dynamics that keep us locked in these cycles of conflict with one another can be basically categorized into about eight different conflicts. We call these conflicts toxic cycles because when each person's behavior is caught up on one side of the cycle, they tend to polarize the other person into a very predictable but directly oppositional position, thus holding the conflict in place. And the more each person adds to their side, the more tension and opposition is created on the opposite side. We are unwittingly inviting others to continue the cycle rather than resolve it. Just like positively and negatively charged magnets, the presence of a strong charge on one side will magnetize and attract a strong oppositional force on the opposite side. So what are these toxic cycles? So there are four of them. The toxic cycle of complaint and defense. Complaint defense. The more you complain, the more the other person defends. The more you defend, the more the other person complains. The next cycle is the toxic cycle of control, collapse. The more you try to exercise control, the more the opposite person might respond by collapsing, where they're feeling the loss of control. The more you collapse, there's a vacuum or a void of anyone holding the reins. And so the more that you want to enter into the system to control, to right the ship. The next toxic cycle is the anxious and avoidant. This was made popular by attachment theory, right? The more that you avoid, the more you create an anxious response, clinging and needy, running after the avoider. But the more that you get anxious, the more that you create someone who is repelled by that anxiety, feels merged with and overwhelmed by that, and the more they want to avoid and run away. So that push-pull dynamic is yet another toxic cycle, has a slightly different energy than the other two that we've talked about so far. The fourth toxic cycle is the toxic cycle of addiction and codependence. In the addiction cycle, there's usually a lot of energy, a lot of chaos in all directions trying to seek out ways that they can numb themselves and try to seek out pleasure in order to avoid feeling something they don't want to feel, right? And so all of that energy in a lot of directions creates that addiction cycle. And the opposite reaction to that is a desire to try to structure it, to try to fix it, to try to rescue that person. And so the codependent martyrs themselves trying to rescue, which creates in the addict a desire to even push farther into more chaos, more flow. Don't try to control me. I'm going to go in all directions. So that's the toxic cycle of like addiction and codependence. Now, each of these toxic cycles play out in, in our relationships, and they're on a continuum from minor to extreme versions of each of these. But we can all relate to moments of being inside of any one of these. So we've seen these patterns play out again and again, and we've learned how to recognize and understand how each person plays a role in continuing this repeating cycle. We discovered that the underlying motivation driving each person's behavior in these toxic cycles also contains the key to permanently resolving the conflict. So rather than the pattern being a result of a character flaw or an incompatibility, we found that each person caught in the cycle was standing for an important value, even a relational gift that is actually necessary for the relationship to flourish. Behind every complaint is our gift of possibility. We can turn the judgment and criticism of that complaint into what's really underneath it. And when we're resourced, that same complaint and judgment turns into a belief that we know is true in a better vision for the future, that where everyone would be served. Now, behind every defense is usually our gift of appreciation. And here, when we're not protecting ourselves and trying to defend and deny and hold back whatever is coming our way, we actually are valuing seeing the perfect perfection of every moment without needing to hide it, fade it, or fix it in any way. Behind our pattern of control is our gift of truth. And here, when we're regulated and relaxed and realize that when we take our hands off the wheels that we're gonna be okay, the gift of truth comes forward and it's all about seeking candor and clarity and integrity in all our interactions. And behind our pattern of collapse is our gift of harmony. And when we're not feeling overwhelmed and collapsed, and afraid of everything going on around us, that desire to actually seek harmony instead is our ability to attune with empathy and compassion. Behind our anxious behavior is our gift of devotion. Here, that anxiety that worries that it isn't loved or lovable and gets anxious 
When we free ourselves from some of that pattern, that same desire becomes a deep devotion and commitment and availability for connection. Behind our avoidant behavior is our gift of freedom, right? And when we're feeling relaxed and free and like our own desires and needs are going to be honored, we bring this gift of sovereignty and authenticity and self-expression. Behind addiction is our gift of passion. And here we're embodying our aliveness and keeping the spark alive and the energy awake and aware. And behind our codependency is our gift of true partnership, relating with respect and collaborating to create a win-win and all the structures that go into place that have us feel protected and safe and cared about.